Joining us tonight to talk about all of this and more is Lila Rose. Hi, Tim. Who are you? I am Lila Rose. I'm the founder of Live Action, and I don't know if aliens exist or not. That is an interesting topic, so I don't have a ton of opinions, except it would be fun to meet an alien. Yeah, maybe. And- <laughs> Unless they like are trying to experiment on people or something, you know. That would be a problem. We don't, we, we're not particularly nice to non-human entities when it, like in reference to cows and, and stuff like that. We're not nice to human entities. And that's, so Live Action's focus is protecting humans. And what never makes the headline is that 2,500 humans, children in the womb, are killed every single day legally in the United States. Good point. <laughs> humans so, aren't good to other humans. What would aliens do? So remember Barack Obama when he said he didn't know when life began that that was above his pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know when human. We don't even know when human beings are. Yeah. So yeah. what would go. be a non-human biologic? It beats us, right? So you're saying they may have found an, a fetus in the, in the spaceship, <laughs> and they're like, "Wait, it's not a human." That, that, <laughs> that, that, that is a theory, Tim. <laughs> that is a theory. What is the agenda of these intelligence agencies? Has it been to expose? secret information to the public or has it been to protect the Bidens it's, and other corrupt politicians it's to my, protect the government? My argument is there's a lot of incompetency in government. And so it can look like random stuff that doesn't make sense can look like some conspiracy that doesn't really make sense, but we think it's targeting someone. But a lot of the times it's incompetency. That would be my argument for a lot of government <clears throat> bureaucracy. There's estimates that we kill about 50 million preborn children globally. Tens yeah, of millions yeah, of preborn children. But you have, you have to so understand. So we kill our young. When you and talk, so what would they think about that? Yeah, but when you species ta- that kill our young. When you talk about that, you have to you have to acknowledge that the people that are actually having abortions, they don't conceptualize it as killing. They just don't. Like I know, I know that that you do. A lot of people that are listening to, um, uh, no, people think, that are pro people that are pro choice don't consider it killing. That's, that's why that's they different. can do. Hmm. Yeah, that's people who get abortions and people who are pro-choice are two different things. Fair enough. Okay, people that are pro-choice do not consider it generally, and this is a generalization. But people that are pro-choice don't consider it killing at all. They consider it a medical procedure, and that's why they want to make I, control I, the argument the so way they do. I think I, that's I, pro-abortion I, people. <clears throat> I think the traditional pro-choice, like I said, that overwhelmingly does. Mm-hmm. Many of them do think it is killing. I find, it is. but the point that I'm making is the people that find pro-abortion because uh, most people aren't pro like pro-abortion fine fair enough but no, no, no. most most of the left is pro-abortion but most people most aren't, people aren't, aren't i think aren't there's a variety the there's a lot of different reasons and there's a lot of different beliefs around it about whether or not i'm actually killing someone is it a someone am i just going to put my head in the sand the fact is we are killing as a society globally i don't i don't know how aliens tens was, of millions of people and because you were saying the right to human life i think that's a good mm-hmm. starting point for life for humans but at what point is an egg a human? I, I wonder. Like I'm like, well, it's if it doesn't have a brain, human. it doesn't have a heartbeat. No, when it's fertilized. Is a sperm an egg? Is a sperm a human before no. it fertilizes the egg? Is no. it a human right when it's banging on the egg's outer wall? Like, no. is it, it only once it's in and that first magical electrification appears, then it's when a human a uni- all of a sudden? Because it, it, it doesn't yes. look like a human. When a, uni- when a unique set of DNA is created, life begins. It's, it's called. Conception. I agree that it's sperm- living. I agree that it's living, but I don't think it's a human. So personally. sperm egg fusion, and you get a single cell embryo that has its unique set of DNA, nothing like it ever before, and that is going to grow. It's going to self-actualize, you can argue, grow itself, meaning it needs nourishment, but it's going to start exponentially developing more and more cells, developing that heart. The heart's going to beat at just three and a half weeks. It's crazy how early the heart breaks. Six weeks, you have brain waves already. So human life, and virtually all biologists agree, it's fertilization. You're, you're, Even Peter Singer, who is that you know pro infanticide ethicist from Princeton, says it's at fertilization. Human life begins not with a sperm or a, an egg. You I know, think, it begins at the sperm egg. I think the dis- if I'm an IVF specialist, right? You know, IVF, you're creating um, new embryos in a petri dish to implant them in a woman down the line, right? But my, my big aha moment is when I have achieved sperm egg fusion and I have all these embryos now, right? And now I have all these little embryos that I can then go on and plant and they'll continue to develop into ultimately some of them, we hope, a full-term baby. You know, I have huge issues with the ethics of of IVF. I think it's very, very problematic. But the point is, you know, the IVF specialist knows I'm trying to create a human embryo for these parents that just pay me to do this, right? So I think biologists are in agreement and we know from, you know, the fact that they have human parents, this is human, 
it's human a single cell single cell humans are very very tiny doesn't look like a human the way you and i look like humans right but a newborn baby doesn't look like you right i mean they have this huge and, heads and, and the line of thinking so we um, look different at different stages in our development as humans we look different and so, sometimes we're so small you can hardly you can't see you but that doesn't mean you're not there we are playing god with human lives and in these you know, Frankenstein-like experiments that we're not acknowledging any ethics around it gu as guardrails. And so we're doing this insane stuff. And I think it's opening the door to all of these abuses. Abuses of humans, for sure. We're there's, a, there's a million frozen embryos in IVF right now. Well, million well, children in deep freeze right well, now. Well, in this country, you're not allowed to do it, but you can fly to whatever country in Europe and they'll allow you to, to, to edit the gene so your child will never have cancer. So your child will never have this, will never have and, any number of, of genetic defects that you can guarantee that, it, that your kids won't have anymore. You are not, you are not going to be able to tell people yeah. they can't do and that. And there can be ethical treatments depending how it's done. So... I think that's an important Good. distinction to make. But back to the kind of question of, well, they're going to do it anyways if it's something that's unethical, right? That we could all agree this is an unethical thing. Like, you know, uh, creating a 50%, if it was possible, I don't think it is, but creating a 50%, you know, human and a 50% pig or something. But, that, but that's, my, that's, but my that's point not, is just that's because... That's issue. I don't think just, it's unethical. No, 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 is to have rules of the road. We don't live physically without rules so of the road. So what do you and do, do? So what we when do when someone from outside the United States mm -hmm. is genetically engineered and now lives in the United States? We treat them with dignity and respect, one thousand percent. What but happens? We can still we still have a responsibility for in our country and whatever country we are a part of. What this isn't just the United States. Other countries are called to be ethical too. It's not like just Americans should be ethical. Everybody should be ethical. And there's a lot of amazing countries outside of the United States that I would argue are more ethical than us. Malta, as an example, has eradicated abortion in, in Europe. So there's countries that are more ethical than us in the West. Chile is a very pro-life Latin American country. Um, but the point is, we should be focused on what is the right thing for a society to do? What's the role of the law? And then we should pursue that instead of saying, well, technology is going to figure it out and eventually we're doomed to it. Think about nuclear warfare, right? We, we have nuclear weaponry. So we could just say, well, we're all doomed to die by nuclear weaponry at some point. I mean, you could make that same argument, right? But you could say, well, no, if we treat each other ethically and we practice ethics and we have good rule of law and good systems, we can avoid mass destruction. And I think that it is ultimately a spiritual sickness that we are facing because we have lost the plot. Like, what is the point of human existence? Is it to just take? Is it to just, you know, become more powerful or more perfect? Like, what's the point of human existence? Is it to love and to serve and ultimately for eternity for God? Or is it to take? And that difference, I think, if people are kind of wishy-washy on that, they don't know what their purpose is, then we don't really care enough. And then we just, you know, maybe stamp like you're saying D or R or whatever it is. We're going in and we're not really caring enough to really fight but I do think a lot of people are fighting for the country right now and they care and they're raising young families. I know my family, we're raising a young family. We're passionate. We care about the future. We think there is a future and enough of those people, if enough of us do that, we can change it. It's going to be painful and hard at points, but I think we can change the country and make it better. So Diane, I don't think it's hopeless. Youth in and of itself, I think is not the key, but to your point, I think you know, if you're very to the point of having strokes and you need medical leave, you should take care of your health and not be trying to lead the country in, in this case. But I think it's not just youth, it's wisdom. And I think there's a crisis of wisdom. And that's where the we have a lot of failed, even young leaders are terrible. So it's not like the, just because you're young, you're better. If you're young, you could be even more foolish. McConnell doesn't seem to have any real wisdom about him either. That could be true. <laughs> I, mean, I Look, will not argue with that. I mean, I'm, I think he, he has done some good things in his career, but I do think... I agree with you. We need we need more. We need fresh, not just fresh leadership. We need good, good leadership. Healthy brains. Some of the best public policy that I think we could be doing right now is not affecting how we're voting, but it's affecting how we support the American family. Investing in the American family through child tax credits, through giving more support to the American family, giving them write-offs, giving them more. You know, even a, a subsidy. Give give families a subsidy if you have a child. You get a subsidy, especially if you're a married couple. You get a subsidy because we want to encourage those things. Three kids, no taxes. I would Dude, say, yeah, that a sounds lot great. Of people would have three yeah. kids. That sounds Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Or, or like an eighty-five yeah. percent reduction in your taxes, or any something, anything. I mean, no. children I'm sorry, are, I'm sorry. Married and three kids, no taxes. 
they are our most precious resource children. They're treated like crap in this country, especially if they're pre-birth. And if we change that and our public policy helped change that, I think there would be beautiful outcomes. Because what, what matters, it's not about our selfish individual pursuits. I want to do, I'm not going to have kids because I just want to travel the world or whatever it is. It's about children are the future and they're, uh, we learn how to love through sacrifice and through service and through responsibility to each other. And if we could encourage that through public policy, then that would be a beautiful thing. But what not if, to force it, not to force it, but to encourage what, it. What, what, we what, do what, need to encourage the American family because right now it is too hard to raise a family and this should be the not too hard, meaning impossible, but it's harder than it should be. And we need to make this country the friendliest place in the world to raise a family. That's what that should be the American dream. Agreed. And that should be the focus of public policy. Wasn't Hunter Biden's computer full of pornography? Well, yeah, of him. Well. Yeah. It's, so it's just the whole thing is is obviously very, very sad. But it also just shows the state of the culture, right? That, you know, the president, even the first family, right? The son is involved in all these things and I think it's one thing to talk about tax evasion. It sounds like it happened and he's pleading guilty. But all of these other things, you know, in a think about it. We don't, I think, as a society, we're not hard on porn. We think porn's fine. Everyone, we say everyone, most people use it. It's not a big deal. It's legal. And so, you know, Hunter Biden can do all this stuff and it's crazy. And then, oh, but he did tax evasion. So that's the bad thing that he did. This is crazy. Let me, let me, let me, let me read this. And all the stuff about Nor prostitutes and strippers. And it's just, it's Nor all... All dark stuff. The president is such, I, the liar word is a good one for him because he professes this faith. So, you know, I'm Catholic, as many people know, you know, I became Catholic in college and Joe Biden says like, he's Catholic. Like he ran kind of on, I'm the Catholic grandpa, I'm this good man, I'm the uniter, I'm this, you know, man of integrity. And, you know, separate from this whole scandal, right? He is the most pro-abortion president, the most pro-sexual deviancy pre president in probably our history. Maybe Obama was up there on abortion, but he is, he's been more pro-abortion than even Obama. So the White House is a disgrace today. I, I gotta it say. It is an absolute disgrace. And you saw like the topless um, yeah, I, you know, uh, you know, oh, yeah. woman or man who was dressing as a woman and had you know, fake breasts three and was topless. People. There were three that were topless. I mean, what a shame that this but, has uh, become our White House and yeah. our leadership, pro-abortion, pro-sexual <clears throat> deviancy, pro-chaos and unreality. You know, a man is a woman, a woman is a man. And, I got, and I now pro this, it's Ian, a shame. It's a he shame. He said this is like the worst thing he's done, but he also sniffs kids and like the, uh, inappropriately touches them it, and things like that. It's, it, it that is be, very weird too. It might I be mean, the time it's, it's the, odd. The time and the place because we need, I feel like the, the earth is in the most desperate situation it's ever been in in my lifetime right now and we need real like straightforward leadership. So it's like coupled with that. It's Trump. Like what he did, yeah, it's, guys, it's not that bad. He just lied about his son being an abusive pornography guy or whatever, but like, or, or a lot, he had his son do billion dollar deals. It's like, okay, it's not as bad as murdering a hundred thousand people. Or murdering a million babies allowing a million babies a year to be murdered but we need it's like horrible. George Bush had the leeway to take us to war in 2003 mm -hmm. we don't have the leeway to mess around right now this is like get your shit together or we're done I what, think he just you, needs to be voted out ASAP I mean there's you, no there's no I pray for the president actually I pray for I believe conversions are possible but it is it is we are in a severe crisis because of this not just because yes. of this White House. Obviously, it's lending to the problem. There's just systemic rot right now what, across the country. I don't know if, if you were going to ask this, Phil, but what will happen is if we don't seize moral authority on Earth, it'll become the economic forum and the Chinese Communist Party will seize moral but authority. But where do we ground our moral authority, right? And that goes back to the stuff that you know we were talking about earlier. But if we don't get first things right, first human rights are protected for the most vulnerable members of a society. If we can't treat the most vulnerable correctly, and if we can't shape, you know, men are off with hookers and pornography and women are on OnlyFans. I mean, all of this cultural chaos that we're env enveloped in, where are we going to have the moral authority to go say, we're better than China, we're going to go to war with China. We need to fix the rot in our yeah. country and in our culture. And there's also really loving sex happening on YouPorn. Mm -hmm. Like, you see the occasional video of two people that really like each other. Mm -hmm. And like, is that that's, a thing, YouPorn? Yeah, it's YouPorn. Com. You know, it's a, oh, it's really? a porn site. Yeah. Oh, X2. There's but if it's, if, it's if it's beautiful, loving sex between two people and it's truly loving, then it should be for just them in the context of marriage. And it's going to potentially bring life into the world because sex is designed to do that. And so they need to be prepared to raise those children and they shouldn't be selling it for people to watch on the Internet. Well, I've if it's learned, really loving sex. I've learned how to have sex from <laughs> certain videos. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> like different positions, different, yeah. different um, rhythms, like. And and that's like was he help helpful for me in the long run. So if 
So I don't think it's all evil and like we should just never watch ever sex. I don't, personally. Well, I think it, it, there, uh, that's an interesting question because I think if, for example, I think if you're in a, a, a marriage and you are wanting to love your spouse better, I think it's absolutely appropriate to learn more about sex so that you can learn how to have the best sex with your spouse. And the best way to do that is with your spouse, right? That's what I think. Um, not by watching other people have sex. Well, that, I mean, if you, sometimes if people are in an insulated environment, they just repeat the same thing over and over and over again. They, that's all they know because they don't know there's other methodologies. The problem with watching people have sex is typically people do that so that they can have sexual gratification from that. Yeah. It's if, not, it's not like a class. It's, I, I agree with that because if you, for orgasm, it's if, pornography for if, orgasm. Typically, if you let your mind think of the person on the video, that's like demoralizing. But if you watch mm -hmm. the porn and then think about your girlfriend, that's like a healthy, I fa it mm -hmm. feels a lot healthier and I use the technique on the girlfriend. Well, I would say that sex is for two people who have committed each other to each other for life and that they're in that commitment. They're willing to bring children into the world because sex brings life. Even when you use contraception, it fails. 50% of the people who have abortions were using contraception. So contraception is not some fail safe. It, it fails. You know, it's not, it doesn't always work. And so marriage is the beautiful solution to all of this and in a marriage i think you can definitely you know maybe uh study about how do we have sex with each other better but i don't think pornography has any role in that i've heard people say well we watch por porn as a couple in order to have a stronger and more loving relationship and i don't think that really works in the real world one of the top reasons for divorce is pornography i wonder if That's the like, end I think result the second top reason listed for why people divorce is the pornography at the end of the day you're sexually visualizing someone who's not your spouse I wonder and you if should reserve that for just your spouse because that's your one flesh you've committed to but here's the thing I, I mean <laughs> the whole thing about well the traditional people will go to the traditional things and then everyone else will go crazy I think all people we have the same human nature and so we have a lot of shared struggles right and then bad ideology can make us do bad behaviors that ultimately can warp our natures but i think all people are called to the same goodness and so i would say liberals on the left should get married too they should have children too they should be faithful too they should be against pornography and abortion and all these things too and i think some are i mean i know for example i know some more um, progressives entering the pro-life movement and a lot of them doing amazing work in the pro-life movement and many of them are as they're learning about sex and life and bioethics many of them are becoming not just pro-life but they're becoming okay i'm pro-marriage i'm pro these more traditional values but i can still maybe have more left-leaning beliefs on maybe immigration or these other topics but they're very passionate about marriage now as well as life and as you know what are seen as the more tra more traditional values so i think their traditional values are not just for conservatives if they're if it's true if it's a morality it should be for everybody if you were to say well, like i don't know are you s suggesting like delete all the porn sites prevent anyone from being able to see it ever kind of yes thing? i think we should ban pornography and i also think that we should as a society move towards and we should set up say hey monogamy is awesome we should celebrate monogamy marriage and we also i think should encourage people to not be sexually active until they're married. The, but you're, the, one of the things that I, I hear you talking about encouraging, but I feel like you want to get rid of things. So you're talking about legislation. Well, definitely porn and abortion. So yes. legislation. See, that that's where I have Especially a problem. Especially abortion. I mean, I, that, I, 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 that, I definitely get your point yeah. on abortion. I've, I've been feeling it all night. So, and, and, and because fair they're enough. Human, because it, they're, if, if we believe they're human beings or agree that they're human beings, and we, this is the pro-life case, just boiled down, it is always wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human. Most people agree with that. Unless we're at war. Abortion, well, in that case, it's not still innocent. wrong because under just war theory, you're not supposed to target civilians, right? Sometimes they die accidentally, but you can't intentionally target the civilian, right? And enemy combatants yeah. so, are not innocent. Are not innocent. Yeah, but when exactly. you firebomb so, Dresden because they well, were running product through the city. Not you know, there can be war crimes. Not there can innocent. be war crimes. So that, But that, the idea of a crime within war means it's always wrong to intentionally kill an innocent person an innocent human abortion intentionally kills an innocent human therefore abortion is always wrong and that means not only should we not have abortions but we should ban abortions because these are human beings that deserve equal protection under the law the 14th amendment says that we have equal protection we should have equal protection under the law all persons and, the, and, and the no only, state has the right to deprive life of any person without due process and the only there's no due process for the unborn child right the now. The pro-abortion crowd has is just to say that babies aren't alive, right? Which is no. I mean, deep down, I think most people know that's completely. I think, I think ridiculous. Vosh said on this show, I asked if it him, wasn't alive, the child wasn't I, alive. You wouldn't need to kill them. There's a multi-billion-dollar pornography industry, right? 
And so we can penalize that to say, no, you can't be, because there's a lot of sex trafficking that happens in it. A lot of children that are, I mean, the harms associated with the creation of porn are so numerous. Children caught up in it. I mean, child pornography, a child assault material has been proliferating once, online. Once right? you start talking so, about, once you start talking about like child pornography, now you're talking about a different topic because mm-hmm. I understand that there are correlations and there there are links, but the, the topic that, that we're discussing, if we're talking about adult entertainment, that's adult stuff. Cause there's no one at this table is, is in any way going to, going to, be pro child uh, uh, you know child rape or anything which is all it is so the 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 associations with adult movies and then with with child rape i i think they're they're far enough different where we can at least say hey the adult industry doesn't lead to child rape. Child let's, rape happens in the Let's, let's, let's jump to the story. But the reality is with the prolifer- proliferation of pornography in general, it creates sexual appetites and addictions that need to be continually stimulated with going down this rabbit hole of more and more violent or rape-centered pornography. That's the same or let's, 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 that let's move children. on. So it's all interconnected, okay. unfortunately, because it's all, I think, ultimately abusive. From last year after Roe v. Wade was overturned, there was all of these articles and we just did a actually a satirical video at Live Action about these articles articles but they were from like vox and these different news companies about all these people who said my sex life is going to change forever because roe was overturned now i'm gonna have to be really careful about who i have wasn't sex it, with wasn't it really <laughs> funny how the it the, was so it just the leftist women were like we're gonna boycott sex right and then conservatives were like no wait don't <laughs> i mean but or right but Christian it just shows mostly. like i mean first of all it is a fact that abortion is backup contraception and even the people who claim contraception stops abortion they know that and they're lying That's contraception the only increases the abortion rate ultimately because it gives people this false sense of security that oh i'm gonna have sex um you know i'm not ready for being a parent i'm not even married i'm gonna have sex oops I get pregnant. Okay, well, abortion's my backup contraception. That's the way it's operating. That's why we have 2,500 abortions a day in this country. I would say more important even than, you know, your your case for abolishing no-fault divorce, if we abolished abortion, which is killing people, then it would change sexual ethics. It already is changing sexual ethics in places where, even from the people who say, yeah, it's changing my sexual behavior, places where abortion is illegal. My concern, though, is that people do it in back alleys with the most gruesome methodologies if we don't change the culture's mentality before we legislate that they can't do it anymore. We've got to do both because the law is the teacher. So, you know, a lot of women um, and a lot of men who are, pressuring for abortions if abortion is not readily accessible they they many of them don't have abortion so the law does influence your behavior we know that with seatbelts you know when there's a lot of wear a seatbelt you wear the seatbelt back in the 80s no one i think wore seatbelts because there was no law so the law is wrong i'm from new hampshire and we don't have seatbelt laws up there but i wear my seatbelt <laughs> we're in yeah. virginia yeah. guys laws are wrong. safety first yeah, yeah. Well, but but lo- but bottom line is the law does matter but i agree with you i think you're making a good point that the culture matters a ton too and that's where you know talking about this stuff is so important and having open conversations because i think a lot of people i think ultimately we want love you know like sex at the end yes you know there's sexual gratification but most people today i think deep down people in general they want love they want a loving relationship you know that girl of your dreams that man of your dreams they're not just looking for an orgasm they're looking at the end of the day for love and people who just hook up ultimately feel empty in the end so talking about how do we actually achieve that well if you start putting sex back into marriage and getting to know each other before sleeping together like really get to know each other really understand is this someone i share values with what i want to raise a family with you know that would do so much to improve relationships i talk to a lot of young people gen zers who feel and millennials you know over the years back when they were younger but who feel like if they didn't have sex they were the weirdo that if they were the virgin, they were the weirdo. It's like the, you know, the 40 year old virgin movie, you know, like the weirdo, Great right? Movie. The weirdo. But I think that's the problem, right? So it's one thing where people make their own decisions, no. in the end, right? We can't control what people do. I agree with you 100%. But I do think we can change the narrative on this. I don't stuff. think that it's pure pressure. I think that it comes from inside of people. Like well, I think the, the the urges that we have, the urge to mm-hmm. eat, isn't because homie told you that steak's real good over and over and over. It's because you have <laughs> an urge to eat. That, and, that, and actually, actually, I did not eat until my friend was like, "Have you tried?" And I was like, "I'll give it a shot." So that's, and that's one of the now urges. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But if there's a lot of societal forces, like you know, we all love ice cream. At least I'm gonna guess you all like. I love. I ice haven't eaten in a long time. Okay. Well, you. But that's it. 
you haven't eaten in a long time because you have these ideals and these this view now that maybe if I eat too much ice cream, it will make me sick, right? And so I think, and you know what's good for my body, right? What What is the right thing to do for my body? So similarly, I would argue, we're not talking enough about the harm of sex before outside of marriage. We're just saying, well, everyone's going to do it anyways. Give them a condom and it's great. That's not the right approach. The right approach instead to say, you have, we, ha- we can practice discipline. We can practice self-control. People are happier and they stay together longer when they don't have sex before marriage and don't shack up before marriage. The, the social data proves that. But is it om- so we should be talking they, about they, that. Could it be- Why don't we have more conversations about the beauty of what we're aiming for? Like that beautiful image of the couple that's married 50 years and they're holding hands on the park bench, right? And they were their first lover. You know, they were virgins when they got married and they committed to that. I mean, it takes a commitment. Culture. I'm not saying it's easy. Exactly. But it's culture. My question- and so we can do our part in creating culture and not saying like people are doomed to just hook up and sleep together and be promiscuous. No one's doomed to promiscuity. No one's doomed what to I'm that. Wa- it is a fact that people who cohabitate before marriage are more likely to divorce than people who don't. We're going to go to super chats, but one final most thought don't is know that. They cohabitation think they- is illegal in West Virginia. <laughs> Interesting. But most people are told cohabitate is good because it'll help you get to know each other and try it on before you marry to avoid divorce. That's the cultural narrative today. And that's actually not true. It's better to not cohabitate and ha- practice a sexual morality to each other to really get to know each other on a spiritual and intellectual level, get to understand each other's families, backgrounds. And then, hey, is this a life project partner that I'm going to commit to for life to raise a family with? Yes. OK, now I'm going to marry and p- pledge myself to you publicly. Now we'll share each other's bodies. In the state of California, if you counsel someone with unwanted same-sex attraction and they're a youth and you're counseling them to deal with their unwanted same-sex attraction, you can get in trouble with the law. That's how far gone we are because of the mythology around conversion therapies that are so evil. Yes, have there been some evil conversion therapies? Yes, but most counselors who are, I think, seeing this the correct way, understand that same-sex attraction, a lot of it is connected to traumas, issues in your past, how you developed your relationship with your mother, your father, and those things need to be explored, especially when that person is saying, what is this with me? I I don't understand the the way that I am. And the fact that we don't even have those conversations, we're not even allowed to have those conversations, I think is horrible. It's it's so, I was just interviewing a, a woman who was living in a lesbian relationship, like a I think she was married or she was in a, in a long-term relationship and she ended up rejecting that because she said, that was what I was told was going to make me happy in the end. But at the end of the day, she said, my identity is in God. You know, she's a Christian, but it also is realizing that I'm not designed to have sex with a woman. That's not my identity. That's not what I'm designed for. So I think we need to hear more of those voices. But again, that's like faux pas today. You're not allowed to talk about that. And I think that's a problem and it, it hurts a lot of people. Did you hear us hear the story of the surrogate in California? I don't think we so. Yeah, where the, the guys wanted the, sur- the, the baby <laughs> terminated, but... So two men who have no business trying to adopt or create a child, two men got together, they hired a surrogate, they, they hired an egg donor, they created these babies in, in vitro uh, through IVF, and then they implanted this little beautiful baby boy in this woman, they you know got a surrogate, and she gets cancer. She gets breast cancer. And she is going to need treatment. And the baby is about 24, 25 weeks old. So old enough to survive. You can survive as young as 21, d- d- 21 uh, weeks, six days, five days, I think, is the earliest surviving little boy, little girl. And what did the dads say? The dads, they're not even dads. They, these men who purchased this life now destroy it. And she said, well, let me, let me give birth to it and let it, let it be adopted. I'll adopt him, this little boy. We don't want our DNA out there, one of the dudes. And so what happened? They delivered this beautiful little boy at 25 weeks old and left him to die, ultimately. And this was all done legally in the state of California where abortion is legal through all nine months. Why did she let it happen? She shouldn't have. She's responsible too, in my opinion. I think surrogates, I think women who uh, give their bodies, you know, I, I can see the some good intentions in it for some people saying, I'm trying to help this family. I think it is all wrong and should all be stopped. And women shouldn't be have any part in selling their wombs and then you open the door to these horrible human rights abuses, like this little this little boy that was killed, brought into existence, and then killed. 